Hi there, this is Koshik Ranchad. Welcome to our weekly immigration show. Today we are going to talk about how do you get through to USCIS because as you may or may not already be aware, it is very frustrating. So you'll want to stay tuned because if you file an application, there's a good chance that it, you're going to get frustrated because it takes so much time for them to process the case and you'll want to know these tips and tricks. Also, I'm going to give you the latest update on what's going on with the medical I-693 and a new waiver that's been issued by USCIS. My name is Koshik Ranchad. I'm an immigration attorney representing clients throughout the 50 states. And if you ever have any questions, you can reach out to us at 916-613-3553. Make sure that you smash that like button. And if you have questions or comments, post them below. So if you filed an application with USCIS and you have, if you feel like it's exceeding processing times and you've tried to call them, you may know that sometimes you might get lucky and get through and sometimes you may not. And even if you get through, it could take an hour plus to try to get an answer and you may not even get an answer. Um, they may say, well, we're, we're going to call you back. We're going to research that and it can be extremely frustrating. So in this video, what we're going to talk about is another option to get a hold of USCIS and that is the Emma chat. The Emma chat can also be extremely frustrating because you might think that it's just artificial intelligence talking to you, a robot. And so you need to know how to break through and get to a live agent. So one way to do this is to ask for an info pass appointment and that can get you through to a live agent. Keep in mind that this is what's working now, but this may not work in the future as they change their AI. So what's really interesting is that Ask Emma provides the same service as actually calling into the contact center, but it is, if you know how to use the Ask Emma chat, a more streamlined service and you don't have to sit there waiting online, listening to that music, you know, that annoying do -do 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 elevator music. So you can just kind of do it at, at your own pace maybe you can even multitask while you're doing it well it's a little bit hard to multitask if you're communicating but it's a lot easier than calling on the phone you might also want to consider ask emma if there's no e-request option this could be a good option for you as well and this is a good option for instance if you've exceeded processing times now please note uscis wants you to wait 60 days before contacting them but this could be a good option for that. This is a good option for expedite requests. All right, back to how do you navigate this Ask Emma? Because if you don't navigate it correctly, you can still end up in a very frustrating experience. What you'll want to do is select the Contact Us button. Now, go to first of all, go to the USCIS.gov page, then go to Contact Us on that page. This is the immigration website that also contains other information from here. If you wanna check your processing time, how long it's taking, you can put in your, there's a link to put in your receipt number. You can also get forms off of the website as well here. You'll notice that the chat window will appear on the top right hand side of the screen. Now, listen, this is really, really important. When the chat box appears, type live agent. The next thing you'll want to do is select the case status. You will have to enter your case number to be connected to a live agent. And just like when you call a customer service and they ask you for your, you know, if you call AT&T or whoever, they ask the same thing over and over again. It's the same here. They're going to ask for your case number again down the road in the chat. After that, then that is where you will put a statement of what you need. So an example of that might be case processing times have been exceeded has the RFE been sent or you want to expedite your case. After you complete the inquiry, you will get an SMRT number. Now, this last step is really important because you want to document everything that's been done because that way, if USCI says, well, you never contacted us, you can refer to this in the future. So keep a copy of the chat transcript so you have it, put it in a Word document or some other Google Doc so you have it for the future event that you need to reference it. Let's look again at what Ask Emma could do. So it can do 
expedite requests. You can check the status of your application. You can even do a rescheduling uh, request and it'll provide an SMRT. You can also request an info pass here. And if you never got a notice, you could request a duplicate notice as well. So it's pretty cool. There is a tool that can offer a lot of solutions to problems you might be facing. So I hope this will help you if you feel like your case has exceeded processing times or you didn't get a notice or you want to actually schedule an info pass. Our experience is that it has been very difficult to get an info pass. We're hoping that's going to change as USCIS gets caught up in their backlogs, but doesn't hurt to try to actually request for an info pass. All right, now that we've gone over that, I also wanted to give you an update of a recent announcement about the medical and this is really important if you're applying for an adjustment of status application let's give you a little bit background of the medical and it's important in general if you're applying for certain types of immigration benefits you have to provide a medical to show that you're not inadmissible for certain types of health related grounds so that's why you have to provide a medical so if you're let's say applying for a marriage-based green card that's why you need to submit that medicals to show that you don't have some health related condition that's going to prevent you from immigrating to the United States. Normally USCIS will consider the medical valid for two years. And then there's also an additional requirement as well. The date of the civil surgeon's signature normally would have to be within 60 days of filing your application. This is commonly referred to as the 60 day rule. Now, as you know, COVID's created all kinds of delays, delays in processing. Also, it's difficult sometimes to even get a, a medical scheduled with the physician. There's delays with that as well, and USCIS has recognized it. Because of all these delays, USCIS has addressed this issue, and they've temporarily waived the 60-day requirement of having that signature of Form I-693 by the designated USCI physician. That normally had to be 60 days and that's temporarily waived. Previously, USCIS did waive this from December 9th to September 30th, 2022. And now the great news is they've extended this to March 31st, 2023. This is really great news because it's really unnecessary stress on you when you're applying for an application to try to fit everything in with this time frame. So we applied USCIS for taking action and making this a new rule that will help many of you because you know how difficult and stressful it is when applying for an application and try to keep track of the 60 day rule at the same time you're probably blowing your hair out like ah so let's end on that great news i want to thank you for taking time to watch this video by bettering yourself you're bettering your family and by bettering your family you're bettering the world bye for now